It's really at this point, Hard Rock Stadium should just consider building a Josh Allen statue. We f own those fools. Yo, ho, ho, Da Mafia. Welcome to yet another edition of the Da Mafia Report. And what a game. What a game. I'm not going to lie to you. My anxiety was at an all-time high during that absolute dreadful, dreadful first half. But the Buffalo Bills ended up turning it on. As always, the Bills' defense was dominant per usual, just holding the, the Miami Dolphins to 11 points. And while our offense had its share of struggles, some good old friends ended up stepping in and helping Josh Allen actually ended up putting up close to 23 points in just the second half alone. Although that I wasn't really happy with the entire game, mostly because of that first half, overall, very, very good win. The Buffalo Bills absolutely own the Miami Dolphins. They just cannot beat us at all. In fact, I'm starting to feel bad for them at this point. However, during this video today, I'm going to be going through just some things that I observed while I was watching the game, things I liked, things that I absolutely hated, and we're going to dive right into it. But before I do that, here is a brief word from today's sponsor. Jacksonville, Florida. And the last time Bill's Mafia was there, we didn't necessarily leave with the outcome that we were looking for. But this year, November 7th, 2021, we're coming back. Say that you thought that that was a questionable decision by itself. <laughs> Let's just say that game day tailgate experience is throwing us a party. I mean, holy shit, did they tell these people what we do at tailgates? Regardless, there's no way in hell that I am going to be missing this. Game day tailgate experience is throwing the ultimate tailgate prior to the game on November 7th, starting at 9 a.m. I am talking open bar, a ton of food, live DJ, games, thousands of people and to make it even better it's being hosted by former buffalo bills and jacksonville jaguars player paul pasluzny and reality tv star brody jenner now there's no question on the face of the planet that if anybody knows how to tailgate it is bills mafia so coming from a member of bills mafia i will tell you that this is about to be lit. Me and a bunch of my boys are going to be down there and I want to see you there. Do me a favor, hit that link in my description and before you check out, put in code Mitchell10 for 10% off any ticket that you go for. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Bills Mafia, I will see you there and bring the tables. Real talk, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in Jacksonville, Florida this Sunday, I want to meet you. And I am legitimately leading a horse to water right here for probably the best possible tailgate option that's going to be out there. Check it out. Links in the description. I promise you I'm not steering you wrong here. So yeah, Dom Mafia, I really just wanted to point out a few things that I absolutely fell in love with about this team. And really, some of the notable impact players... Number one, hands down, has to be Cole Beasley. For weeks and weeks, I have been pulling my hair out, trying to guess why that man has not been involved at all in this offense. And when Buffalo started showing its share of struggles, he legitimately stepped up. I mean, I think I remember about four to five straight attempts, Josh Allen continuously just moving the chains, going for Cole Beasley each and every single time. And he completely turned around that momentum of the overall game. Have to give shout outs to Gabe Davis, who has also been somebody who really hasn't been involved within the system whatsoever. And then of course, you also need to talk about Zach Moss. I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of you guys heard me say during my live stream that I still have no idea why the Buffalo Bills even attempt to run the ball. We can't run the ball. We haven't been able to run the ball in over three years, yet in that first half, man, we just kept on trying to hand the ball off either to Singletary or Moss, and we ended up getting nowhere. It was really frustrating. But Zach Moss came alive in that passing game, man. He came alive in that passing game. I mean, Dumas ended up getting about six catches and really being yet another weapon for this team. I feel like when you look at our overall weapons on this offense, we are absolutely blessed to have such a wide selection of weapons that can prove to be effective for us. 
even going into the game, I was dead nervous that Dawson Knox's absence was going to be felt. Tommy Sweeney, dude, he really stepped up. He really stepped up. His number was called for the first time in a very long time to be a consistent contributor to this offense. And he completely stepped up. He really, really did. Overall, Josh Allen completely balling out, going three for four in the red zone, which is always something you like to see. Not even close to where we were against the Tennessee Titans. And then overall, third down conversions were also absolutely lighting it up. Josh had a great game. The overall offense had a tremendous game. Second half, we're just going to ignore the first half and pretend that it didn't even happen. Our defense, once again, being the dominant force that we are. I mean, I could name several players just thinking about who I thought were absolutely balling, and I'm talking several. Ed Oliver, who I know a lot of us have been waiting for him to have the impact that he did this past game. I mean, he was absolutely terrorizing Tua and that Miami Dolphins offensive line, right? Now, Joe Marino on his podcast today said that don't let his stats fool you because apparently he only ended up getting about two tackles, but his overall pressure rate was absolutely insane. Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, their presence was felt. And so both recording a sack. We had Matt Milano earning every single penny of that contract we gave him this past season. And finally, Tremaine Edmonds making a case uh, that we need to extend him as well. Both of them were absolutely crazy in coverage. And then Trey White. Trey White, once, once again, legitimately any ball that came his way, which was a lot more regularly than I thought that it would have been, completely broken up. Now, Levi Wallace for me was hit and miss. I know like a lot of Buffalo Bills commentators said that Levi played pretty well, but I feel like that they were picking on that poor guy the entire first half. De Devontae Parker was having his absolute way with him when it was going into it. But overall, of course, once you consider the fact that our safety tandem was absolutely balling out like usual. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them end up making the Pro Bowl this year just based off of their performance during the half of this season so far. But our defense, man, as long as we can go on ahead, as long as we can avoid any type of injury, let's knock on wood, our defense would be able to carry us through, I would say, pretty deep in the playoffs. Imagine if we had a shitty offense, I could still see us win 10 to 11 games this year with them alone. And so last but not least, is probably going to have to be Tyler Bass. Dude's a stud, man. Dude's a stud. If y'all have been watching me for a long time, and so his first couple of games as a Buffalo Bill... Uh, he was missing a lot of extra points and field goals, and then we actually ended up giving him the nickname Tyler Ass, okay? Um, I'm not sure if he ever watches my content, but that must have absolutely just pissed him off because he has been absolutely lights out ever since. That 57-yarder that he connected on during the weather in Buffalo at that time, brilliant, brilliant. This guy is clutch. This guy is very clutch, and I would rely on him to get us that game-winning field goal if we needed to from anywhere from 60 yards and less. Overall, great, great team win. I mean, really, if I had to reflect on anything that I hated that first half, like I said, didn't really like the play calling a lot by Dable at all whatsoever. I've been saying this for a long time. We can't run the ball. We are a passing first offense. I know running the ball is very important for a successful offense. We just simply don't have the personnel, ladies and gentlemen. And what also blows my mind is, is the fact if something is not working, why do you continue to go into it, right? This is not the time in the regular season where we're legitimately trying to go and nab that first seed in the playoff picture. It hasn't worked for three years. The time to see if it works is in the preseason or those early games or when we have about, you know, a damn uh, 20 to 28 point lead. Not when the game is that damn close. We need to go out there. We need to keep our foot on our opponent's throats and stick with what we know. Say for example that Diggs and Emmanuel Sanders are you know, not getting open or they're getting absolutely locked down. We still have Gabe Davis. We still have Cole Beasley. We still have Isaiah McKenzie. We have a lot of weapons at our disposal at this point, ladies and gentlemen, and we can take advantage of all of them. Defenses can't cover all of them. And if you insist on getting our running backs involved, throw the ball to Moss. He seems to be an absolute lights out running back at catching the football and being able to make plays. But overall, very happy, very, very happy with that performance from our team on Sunday. Now we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, which should be an easy win, right? I mean, I'm not going to say that it's going to be a shoe in. I've learned my lesson from my overly confident titles for the past couple of months. Um, I did see something the other day that there's a Manning cast curse. Whoever showed up on the Manning cast 
uh, ended up losing their next game. As many of you know, Josh Allen was on it last night, so I'm really hoping that <clears throat> that doesn't affect anything. But once again, super confident, happy with what our team has going on. Del Mafia, do me a favor, leave a comment. What are some of your takes? Were you impressed? What pissed you off about the game? I always love hearing them. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dom Mafia Report. And before I let you go, you better always remember, let's go Buffalo.